let me know that you can see that on the screen. Great. Yes. Great. So welcome to um, this webinar on Move Smart MS. Um, Move Smart MS was a project that was funded in 2021 by Rethink Ireland, the Social Innovation Fund, and we're very grateful to them for funding and, and for giving us a chance to test out this very innovative, new, exciting programme that's quite different to the way we would have delivered physiotherapy services in the past. What we're going to do with this presentation is just give you a, a kind of a background to Move Smart, where it came from, uh, talk a little bit about the benefits of exercise. Um, those of you who know me know that that's my favorite topic to talk about. Um, we're gonna uh, divide up the presentation between the three of us. So Jack's gonna talk about uh, who took part. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the impact of participants. Tina's gonna talk on satisfaction. And then we're going to end the presentation just talking about um, the, our vision for the future, what this means in terms of looking for sustained funding. Uh, so from the outset, I think we can say that the programme has been an incredible success. Uh, and what we're wanting to do now is make sure that we have sustained funding to deliver it in future. So just to talk a little bit about exercise. Um, so it's in terms of, of evidence and science, um, it's still the evidence for, for the positive effects of exercise for people with MS is still relatively new. So 25 years ago, we were telling people with MS, no, no, you should take it easy, you know, take, sit down, you have a mess, you should take it easy, fatigue is an issue, don't exercise, it might make you worse. And now we know that completely the opposite is true. We now that know that exercise is safe, we know that it's beneficial for a range of different symptoms. We know that people who are exercising have less relapses than those who don't. Uh, we know that from early studies that there's some suggestions that it might be linked to neural protection, so protecting your brain and spinal cord from future relapses and, and repair in terms of repairing uh, from MS lesions. Um, when I say it's safe, um, this data is taken from lots of studies where we've had people who don't exercise and people who do exercise. And this was typically in trials where we're comparing the effect of exercising to not. And what we see is that for people who are exercising, they have seven times less relapses than those who are exercising. So this is where we can very, very conclusively say that exercise is a very safe intervention. And for me, it's not just about exercising uh, once or twice in a, in a month or, or um, it's about that sustained kind of part of your life exercise becoming part of your recipe or part of your puzzle um, for living well and living healthily with MS. So moving on to think about and move smart and where it came from. So um, who knew that two, two years ago, pretty much to the day, we would be closing down everything, not stopping all of our in-person classes, uh, moving online. I, I, I still remember the day standing on top of the stairs in Tara House, which is our, our physical building in Limerick, um, and hearing the news that uh, we were going into lockdown. And uh, I quite flippantly said, ah, sure, we'll just move everything online. Uh, and we did. I had been involved. I had started my telehealth journey um, in July of 2019. So I've been in the fortunate position that I had been able to um, read up on um, all of the different evidence and the clinical guidelines and um, was, was basically ready to get this done. So we moved all of our in-person classes. Before that, MS Ireland had been uh, delivering in-person classes. Typically, they were people who lived in a specific town or a specific region. So it might have been all of the people who lived near Ennis were driving into Ennis to do a class. And what we learned really was when we moved online that suddenly where you were living didn't matter. Um, and that actually we could have people who were maybe wheelchair users in Donegal exercising with other wheelchair users in Carlo, or we could have people who were newly diagnosed working together. And, and we know that it's very important that you guys are getting the optimal physiotherapy. So, you know, typically those in-person classes would have been people with a range of abilities and a range of different symptoms who just happen to be exercising because they live to get lived, live close to each other. Whereas now with Move Smart, what we can do is do something much more innovative by grouping people, not by where they live, but, but by the thing they want to focus on. And that's really the, 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 um, the unique selling point of Move Smart MS. So we have a specialist team of physios. All we do is do online MS specialist programs. And, and when we do that often enough, we start to get really, really good at it. Uh, we recruit nationally so we can uh, group people according to their 
uh, time since diagnosis, their uh, level of ability, the, again, the symptoms they want to focus on. And you can see that list down at the bottom of the slide is some of the classes we have run in terms of Move Smart. And a lot of those are then, we might have a wheelchair version, we might have a, a version for people who use walking aids, and we might have a version for people who have no problems with their walking at all and don't, don't use a stick. So again, we're separating people out. The example I always give is the newly diagnosed class. We'd never have enough people with MS diagnosed in the last 12 months to run a programme in a specific region. But when we recruit nationally, we can do that. Um, and I think it's it's uh, it's those, that's been one of our very successful programmes. All of them have been successful. But the dizziness one is another example that we would never, there might be one person with dizziness in, in a region, um, but by... Uh, bringing people from around the country, we have enough people to run uh, very specialist tailored online programs. So that gives you a flavor for Move Smart and where it came. And I suppose the, what is unique about it is, is it's entirely online. It's a specialist team of physios who do nothing else but, but treat people with MS online. And the programs are, are tailored to symptoms, time since diagnosis and age whenever we can. I'm gonna hand over to Jack. Jack is gonna to talk to you about who took part in the study. Okie dokie. Hello everybody, I'm Jack. You might remember me from one of our phone calls. Essentially, once you got referred on to Move Smart, I would have rung you up, asked how's it going, and see if we can organize you for an assessment with either Tina or Susan. Um, so in fact, there were almost 500 of those referrals for Move Smart last year. There's 494 to be precise. So those referrals might come in from themselves. You can refer yourself onto Move Smart, or they might come in from a physio, a doctor, whomever. And of that almost 500, 77% of them were female, which ties up with more or less what we know about it. I think the number was 406 to be precise. Now, the mean age for Move Smart last year was 51 years old, but we actually had quite a, a wide age range in total because our youngest was 22 years old and our oldest was 86 years old. Um, now, on average, there was 13 years a gap between diagnosis and the participant. Um, but as Susan was mentioning about newly diagnosed, we actually kept, uh, found 40 people with MS who had been diagnosed within the last two years. So as Susan said, since we recruit nationally, we we're able to put on um, classes specifically for newly diagnosed people with MS, which is hugely beneficial to us. Now, if you look at the slide here, obviously 494 people got referred onto us, but only 324 were offered places. So you might be wondering why the number jumped so much, but it's it's fairly normal stuff. For instance, um, some of them were duplicate referrals. You know, someone might have referred to themselves, uh, referred to them on in January and then again in November. Um, there was an element of some people might have been referred on, but they wouldn't take it any further. You know, I'd ring them up looking to get that assessment and they wouldn't answer. Small stuff like that. Um, there was a handful of people and their diagnosis just wasn't MS. And since it's, you know, an MS program that eliminated them and an awful lot of people actually ended up on our waiting list for 2022 and a good chunk of them are currently in class with us. Um, so 324 people were offered places and 288 actually began in our programs last year. So the drop off there was just, you know, people change their mind, it, their schedules change, you know, life get in the way, perfectly understandable, perfectly normal. Okay, so of those 288 people who began the program, 265 of them actually completed, you know, we have 10, 10 week programs. So that means uh, Ninety-two percent of all participants, you know, finished it. You know, they did 10, 10 out of the ten classes, nine out of the ten classes. And that's a huge number. You know, any any exercise class, any any anything with attendance of ninety-two percent is is enormous. Now the um, the jump down from two hundred and eighty-eight to two hundred and sixty-five. Um, that's you know, it's the same as the previous one. People might have started, gotten a new job schedule changed whatever reason some people do drop out of classes but obviously we had an awful lot attending and completing it uh, now of the people um who you know showed up showed up every week got um you know did we get 10 out of 10 across the board no but we actually did get 76 percent attendance throughout move smart in 2021 which is actually uh, considered excellent there was a recent study and it said for participants with this age age range Anything over 75% is considered 
excellent attendance. It's about 76. It was obviously quite a popular uh, program, quite a popular um, series, quite effective. Um, I reckon we move on to the next slide. There is, and I'll just break down how we, um, we used the patient reported disease step scale or PNDS to uh, just to kind of determine who went where, you know, we had obviously had a different range of programs and not all of them were done by mobility. Obviously, Susan mentioned the newly diagnosed and there's the, uh, the continence classes and dizziness, stuff like that. But a lot of the time when we're um, assessing, you know, which classes, would, which cohort goes into which classes, we break down referrals and in the assessment stage by, you know, their level of ability. So you can see from there, the vast majority of our um, participants, you know, they had no real um, disabilities or it was at the early cane stage. But that said, if you look there, there is quite a wide variety. You know, we have quite a large number of wheelchair um, and scooter users. Um, there's quite a large number of late cane there as well. So it really did have a wide breadth of participants, wide breadth of uh, referrals, wide breadth of participants. And obviously, like I referred to the last slide, uh, a, a wide breadth of people attending and completing the course. So uh, obviously it resonated with you. Great, thank you, Jack. Yeah, so I think the important thing for, for me is that that we're, we're reaching everybody with Move Smart and that we're able to put people into in, into groups with with others in a similar in a similar stage of them so i'm going to talk now about the um the, the research side or the data side of things and um, so we had a range of what i would call physical or objective measures so things like balance and strength and then we had a range of subjective or questionnaire based measures so i'm going to start with the objective measures and these were the, the tests that you did with tina and i at the start or in in the in the group at the end um, and and Really, this is in incredibly positive results and incredibly good news. Um, as a researcher and as a clinician, I'm looking at changes of about 10% to tell me that that is very clinically meaningful, but also st statistically significant. And the first four in that line are all both clinically and statistically significant improvements. So it's really excellent. And I would have to say that is down to you guys. We we give you the information, we give you the programs, but you guys are the ones that go away and do this. So you've, you've and I think you all have, will, will have reaps the benefits of this or notice how these changes affect you otherwise. So the sit to stand test improved by 17%. Balance, depending which leg we tested, improved by 28 or 15 percent. And walking distance was uh, was a 7 percent improvement. I put up the meters here. So there's a big research study that has looked at, well, you know, how much change do we have to go on the six minute walk test? So this is people who use the, the map, my walk or the their their Fitbit or whatever it was to see how far they could walk in, in six, mi six minutes. So from a research point of view, anything over 20 meters we consider to be a big deal. And what we're seeing is that with Move Smart, we nearly have double that. So we're seeing 37.5 meter increase. So the percent change isn't big, but in terms of the clinical significance, it's very big. And you're probably looking at the bottom one thinking, Susan, but the function and CITIC test didn't change. And that's okay. So if you think of it, typically people who use wheelchairs and scooters would have progressive MS. So actually the fact that people didn't change and didn't worsen and actually stayed the same is, is a very positive finding. But the other thing is, and, and those of you in, in Tina's wheelchair classes will know she works people really, really hard, but it's typically fitness that we work on, not sitting function. So we're not necessarily practicing balance and sitting. So to me, it's OK that we didn't change sitting function. First of all, we're, we're keeping people where they are, which is really, really important, not deteriorating. And also, we didn't necessarily train sitting sitting balance, which the sitting balance sitting function test is moving. So a very, very good news uh, side with lots of very, uh, very big statistically and clinically significant measures. The second one is patient reported uh, outcome measures and typically as as researchers or when we're doing what's called clinical audit, which is measuring the effect of a service and um, we would look at things like MS impact impact of fatigue. Um, and those would be measures that we would use quite frequently. But what people told us during the pandemic um, in terms of getting the balance right and active neuro and other projects was actually their mental health was improving. So what we did with move smart we added in. Uh, four other measures. Two were measures of mental health, so looking at depression and anxiety, and, and the other two were in terms of physical activity. You remember my first slide about the benefits of physical activity for living healthily with MS. So one is your confidence or your self-efficacy, your ability, your belief in your ability to exercise, and the other is the actual time spent exercising. So those were ones that we'd added in. So looking at um, uh, the the 
questionnaires, first of all, and I have to say a huge thank you to those of you who took the time to do these measures. We appreciate that it's quite onerous. It would have taken about 25 minutes, so we very much appreciate it. But this is this is what we can do with these measures then. So we can see that, again, we have very large percentage changes on all of those measures. So in terms of impact of MS, both physical and psychological, impact of fatigue, and then in terms of, of walking. And this is all this is all stuff that you guys are telling us through the questionnaires. Um, and this is great. And I think what's really interesting for me is looking at now we can't make a direct comparison because it's not the same people, but look, looking at, at getting the balance right, which is our very effective, really positive changes in terms of, of these measures. Um, but we know that it's mixed and it's not necessarily tailored. Um, we see so we still see statistically significant improvements, but our percentage changes are less. So I think this is telling us that there's something in this specialist model, something in this model where we're bringing people together and giving them more, more tailored and focused um, interventions. And here are those extra measures. Um, so big improvements in depression, which obviously during a pandemic is something that that is, is really, really positive. It's been a very, a very difficult year for us, for, for everybody, for a number of reasons a reduction in anxiety again, and then the self-efficacy ch scale changed only a little bit. I think this is a question of I wouldn't measure it in that way, because when we interviewed you and through the satisfaction surveys and actually through the results of the next bit, which is about the amount of physical activity changed, um, you told us that you were much more confident about exercising and much more happy to exercise and much more, um, you know, had the knowledge that you needed to keep going. So I think that's a question of I wouldn't measure it in that way. And you can see that the two physical activity measures had huge percentages increase. So a 49 percent increase in the in the weekly leisure physical activity is amazing um, and I hope that you guys are continuing to keep up that good work because I mean that change in physical activity that doing the exercises is it's what's helping you have all of these uh, improvements in terms of physical psychological and mental health outcomes. Hand you over to Tina now Tina is going to talk about the satisfaction. Yes, thanks Susan, hi everyone. Uh, yes, so I had the pleasure of analysing the satisfaction surveys. So a big thank you to all 157 of you who completed that at the end of your programmes. Um, as many of you will know, we used a mixture of what are Likert scale questions, where we might ask you a statement and do you strongly agree, disagree, neutral, etc. Um, and also a mixture of open-ended questions, where you just told us whatever you feel you, need, we, you thought we needed to know. Um, as I was going through, I saw, um, first of all, overall, the satisfaction was hugely positive with 99% of people saying that they were um, satisfied with the Move Smart MS program. Um, within that, I was able to see some other themes emerging from um, what you told us. 74% um, of people told us that they felt it helped, the classes helped improve their MS symptoms. Um, and specifically, people mentioned things like improving fatigue, dizziness, continence, balance, walking, quite a, a wide range of things that people felt they had improved on. Um, another key theme was people felt more confident in being able to exercise, just like Susan mentioned with those lovely data from the more detailed um, uh, objective measures. Um, and that also resulted in behavior change of being keeping more active um, after the program compared to before. So that's where the 82% there on the screen are more active taking part, um, more active after taking part than before. Um, also the next theme then, um, a lot of you told us that you really liked exercising with people of a similar mobility level. Uh, in fact, 95% of people said they enjoyed chatting with and learning from people in the class. Um, and I guess there's two points to that. First of all, as we said, the chat and the education part was highly valued by people. Um, we found that by grouping people according to things like symptoms or mobility level, the discussion topics and education topics were able to be more specific to the people in the class. Um, and that, that is again what people were told us in, the, in, the, in your satisfaction surveys that you um, enjoyed. And similarly, um, the exercises were specific to the group as well. We had lots of different types of exercises depending on the class that you were in. Um, other people just told us that they felt MS could be quite an isolating condition to live with and some people even mentioned in the surveys that they'd never talked to anybody else with multiple sclerosis and so the classes was the first time they were able to open up and um, share their experiences and enjoyed really enjoyed learning from other people and um, people often mention things like they felt comfortable to share their experiences and really got some really good tips and advice from other people in the class. 
Um, also, people found the online environment very positive. A lot of people saying things like it was great not to have to travel to get to um, an exercise class. They just simply log on and just log off and they're straight back to their own life. People felt safe um, in that. Um, let's see. And then in terms of the last thing people told us was some ideas for the future. So people, for example, said they would really like to have videos um, of the exercises in addition to the um, handouts, the PDFs that we gave them. And we actually took that on board um, because of the first one or two cohorts who suggested that. We decided, okay, at the end of the last cohort, at the end of last year, we had made the videos and shared them out with you all. Um, also, people suggested creating some resources, for example, um, on foot drop, for example, or walking aids, and that's something we took on board too. Also, people suggested um, that we share this, um, this kind of program with as many people as possible, and that is something else that we are putting into practice. Again, we were able to get funding for this year, and we're advertising uh, a bit more widely. Um, let's see, and I think we just have another slide and then just some of the quotes, and we had such a huge amount of great quotes, but I'll just kind of pick these certain ones. Um, just to show you. Um, another big theme that came through was definitely the mental health aspect. I know Susan went to said in more detail about how that might have manifested itself. But again, when we asked you open ended questions, you're able to tell us things like this. Um, a person saying mentally in a better place to exercise. And because the program was uh, um, aimed at their particular level of ability and mobility, um, this person realized that there was so much more they could do. Um, I'm just, for example, I know I'm um, thinking of people who were in my seated fitness class and by listening to other people in the class, they got some great ideas that they would never have thought of, of how to keep active themselves and things they really enjoyed. It could be like seated boxing or various um, arm bikes or, you know, quite, quite a lot of uh, variety. Um, similarly, um, yeah, another person saying they were able to get a great workout while seated. So as Susan said, we actually did not focus much on the balance in sitting, which is what we assessed. But we did focus on cardiovascular benefit, getting a little bit out of breath, strengthening, um, in order, just really feeling like you've got a good workout. Um, also, a lot of people have told us that just generally they improve their fitness. There's one person here saying they were practically a couch potato before the program and now they're walking most days. So that's really good to hear. Um, and then also there was another person who um, had lost confidence um, following their diagnosis of MS, but after completing the program with us was able to do a five kilometer run. So that was really great. Um, and then what's really great for us to hear is that many people still keep in touch after the program. So they've kind of created new relationships and they can chat together. And um, I know there's a lot of you in our WhatsApp groups, um, sometimes sharing MS specific knowledge, sometimes just sending out funny videos. Um, but also a lot of you are still meeting up to exercise, which is what we love to, to hear, meeting up online. Um, but that's really great to know that um, our programs influenced, influenced you in that way and that um, people are making the most of it. That's from the satisfaction survey. Sorry, it wasn't it wasn't giving me my, my unmute button on my screen. I was all there. apologies for that. Um so we, we want to talk about that. Yeah, and I think uh, Tina hit on a lot of things. I think I, I love the fact that um, I, I go into my email and my 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 Zoom account tells me that uh, somebody has logged on and, and exercised. And I'm looking at this as kind of a better balance group from a couple of times back or a dizziness group from a couple of times back. And I'm, I'm delighted that you're continuing to use the resource and continuing to, to support each other to be active. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the kind of the wider impact. Um, there may be physios listening in, there may be health managers listening in, there may be future funders li listening in. And, and there was huge impacts for, for, you, for you guys, for the participants. But actually, um, that kind of model of specialist tailored uh, physiotherapy had a, a, a knock on, it had an impact on the physio community as well. So um, I host a, a community of practice called Physiotherapists Interested in MS, which has now become Exercise in MS. And we have, it's basically a place for all of our yoga instructors, fitness instructor, physiotherapists to hang out together in, in Microsoft Teams and learn about the latest research and um, get the opportunity if we hear about lectures or really in, in, informative courses. Um, so that, that community of practice has obviously benefited from this program because um, of having 
the sense of, of specialist physios. Uh, we do we weekly in-service training, so um, physio in the care centre and in the West and from the Northwest Therapy Centre in Sligo and ourselves and Active Neuro, we all come together and we read the latest research articles and we uh, maybe um, talk about what's in our classes and get ideas from each other about what works best and, and how to improve it. Um, but the bottom line is, is we're creating a community of physiotherapists that therefore becomes very effective at, at delivering these programs, which means that it's even more effective for you guys, the participants. And it's just another another unexpected outcome uh, from the project that is beyond the, the impact for the participants. Uh, and I really I mean, I some of you kind of really thinking about this this data and and showing you what this data is going to be used for for and, and how these results impact us. some of you may have seen a, a press release from ms ireland this morning which is calling for a national physio service um and you know uh, 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 frequently people with ms tell us that physiotherapy is really really important to them and if it's really really important to them and it's having these incredibly positive outcomes uh, then it shouldn't be something that's reliant on fundraising our branches do an absolutely phenomenal job in terms of raising funds to deliver physio but what we're looking at now is is trying to find um some statutory funding to to have this as as something that is is delivered on an ongoing basis not something that we have to look for for different funding for each year and this is just to give you an idea of the kind of things we would be saying to the hse and if there are any hse uh, personnel out there listening to uh, we know that our move smart programs our active neuro programs are getting the balance right programs can prevent falls and obviously if we prevent falls we prevent injuries if you injure yourself you're more likely to go to a and e you're more likely to go to your gp or potentially you might need additional care if you're for example you can't you've broken your arm and you can't walk your, with your row later you're going to need more services so that all is very beneficial for our, our very stretched healthcare service at the moment and we know that people with ms are quite often on steroids to manage their relapses so the risk of of breaking a bone is, is a little bit a little bit higher than it would be so again if we can prevent people from falling and breaking their hip then we can save the health service a huge amount of money um, and also by being physically active your mental health is better uh, you don't you're less likely to have heart disease and those things that everybody uh, everybody is gets as a preventative um, effect of exercise and as i talked about earlier um you know risk of relapse is reduced because you're physically active and therefore if you don't need if you don't have more relapses you need to see your neurologist less which means that the valuable neurologist time we know that neurology waiting lists are, are hugely long at the moment so potentially opens that up but ultimately we know from the cost of ms in ireland study that if we can prevent people with MS um, having more disability or more difficulty walking, then we can potentially save 19 million a year. So it's a very, very worthwhile investment in terms of, of the HSE. And again, just so that you guys know the kind of things that are happening in the background after you log out, so you continue to, to hopefully find, uh, feel the benefits of the programmes. But with this funding, we were able to deliver 37 programmes. We had, as Jack said, a huge number of participants with very, very, very high completion rates, really high attendance rates. So to me, that's um, that's the best vote of quality is when 92% finish and 75, we have 75% of the classes are being attended. That's that's you guys saying you value it and you do everything you can to come. Um, and I think it's say, also saying MS Ireland as an organisation is, is uh, has the capacity to deliver programmes like these on time, on budget and with meeting and exceeding the uh, the targets and um, so that's really our is our, our our vision is that we have this national physio service so we instead of having uh, programs and looking for fundraising we use the model that we run very successful in the west with the, with with, with uh, in Galway where we have a physio directly employed by MS Ireland who gets really really skilled and really really expert in delivering physio for people with MS and we now from uh, from all of this research evidence have these you know the data from getting the balance right from when I was in UL activity matters move smart we've all of this, this really good stuff and I suppose we also have to acknowledge I think that I saw a question in the chat asking would move smart stay online absolutely move smart will stay online it works so well online and that's the the unique thing is that we can bring people together from all around the country in an online environment but I think we have to acknowledge that online is not for everybody and i think it's there are a lot of people who haven't joined us online so we would see it as a, as a priority to start going back and looking at the people who haven't been able to join us start we now have uh, some uh, trial programs starting out where we've got people coming back to in-person classes and things like that um but that's our vision 
and that's my my challenge in the in my new role as physio coordinator is to see can we uh, bring this vision of a, of a national funded physio service online um i've slightly amended this launch of care uh, vision for right care right place right time and i've added right therapist because i think the data we have from move smart would seem to suggest that having a specialist team of therapists does give some extra bang for your buck if i can use that expression uh, and does have the potential to provide an even more effective service so I will uh, conclude with uh, leaving you some quotes um, from people who've taken part. But most of all, at this point, I want to thank the Public Services Credit Union and the Bank of Ireland Begin Together Fund, who are funding Move Smart in 2022. So we continue, uh, as Jack said at the beginning, we have um, people in programmes right now. We have quite a long waiting list for after Easter, but we are still recruiting for after Easter. Um, and I've put up the link there on screen for those of you who are interested in joining. As you said, you can click on the link yourself or your physio can refer you or your GP can refer you. But um, I will just bring this webinar to a close and say thank you. Thank you to the participants. Thank you for the time that you took to do the questionnaires and take part in the measures. And hopefully this has given you a flavour for uh, what we do with that data and 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 that we don't just it doesn't just sit in a database we we use it to good effect and we're using it to underpin the evidence for the effectiveness of ms ireland's physio programs as we call for a national physiotherapy service so thank you very much the floor is now open for questions or comments i'm just going to stop sharing there was a question actually susan about um how to get on for those to practice over zoom so if we could give a bit more detail on that for the people in the webinar. In terms of how to get onto Zoom, is it? Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, so we have a couple of different resources and Jack, Jack can probably better answer this question. But, <laughs> um, so, uh, so basically I, what we did was we looked at lots of different platforms, right? There was lots of different different ways of doing webinars and uh, sorry you know there was zoom and there was skype at that stage and um, there was teams and we tr tried to choose the one that was easiest so when you uh, register for our classes and um, the first thing that happens is we do a lot of communication by email or jack will phone you and we get you set up and what you end up having is an email in your inbox with a link that you click on so if you can if you have email you can click on that link now we also have some help if you feel that that's uh, too difficult for you now if you're here today if you can click on the link to get in here today you've got it that you can you can get into the classes but we also have um resources um for from uh, organizations like generation tech we have a helpline and we can give you a code that they can ring you we also work with other organizations to do that we have some videos that you can watch and how to how to get online jack is there anything i've forgotten there um i sorry i might have perhaps phrased it wrong i suppose we mentioned earlier in the presentation that there are participants who did of course they're still on zoom they still show up i suppose uh -huh. we might share information on that on how the Perfect. attendees of this webinar can get onto Zoom and exercise weekly Perfect. as well. So basically, the link that you used for your class is still open to you to, to join and, and to log on. Um, so some of you may have been continued to do and some of them may have forgot. And maybe that's a reminder for us that maybe we could send you the reminder emails and say, you know, if you got, if you guys want to meet up again, here's your link. But basically, if you find the last email um, from, from Jack and click on that link, that'll get you into your class. And there may be other people from your class continuing to exercise there. Um, there was also another small question. Sorry, just yep, sorry, yep. on that theme. Um, I know what some of my uh, previous participants are doing is just one person who's maybe more comfortable with technology will take the lead. They might already have a Zoom account and then they will just send out the link to, to their buddies there and um, exercise together. So it kind of depends on whatever suits anyone. You could do your own thing completely if you like. If someone just kind of takes charge and maybe hosts it. So, yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there was one more. Um, on the slide about who participated. Um, it was just about the different types of MS yes. that was. So obviously there was the three main ones with the relapsing, remitting, primary progressive, the secondary progressive, but there was another section which was other. Yeah. So it was just a question yeah. about that. So some, some people have what's called clinically isolated syndrome. Some people have, um, we had a couple of people who were very newly diagnosed and hadn't actually been told what, what type of MS they had. Or there's some people that just didn't really, didn't really, really didn't know whether it was primary progressive or, or relapsing remitting or secondary progressive. So that, that was where the other, other category could go. Um, I'm loving all of the positive uh, comments coming in. Thank you guys. Yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah. Really good feedback. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and Siobhan, I see see that. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting, isn't it? it you know, a, a lot of people struggle to get active or maybe just don't know that they should be active. And I, I talked about that ch real shift in evidence from, you know, there, there possibly are still some, some doctors out there who don't specialize in MS who are saying, oh no, take it easy. And sometimes your family members will say, oh no, take it easy. But actually the benefits of exercise now, Siobhan, that you're seeing is, um, it, it, yes, it's very great. Um, so no, the classes, Grace, if you're clicking on the link for the classes, it doesn't have the 40 minute time limit because we have MS Ireland has a, a Zoom for healthcare account. So you're still using our, our account by using the, the link that you clicked on. Um, I'm going to ask if there's any questions and, I, and I'm going to actually pose a question for Tina. So Tina has worked as a physio in lots of different services before she joined the Use Move Smart team. And I really want to get kind of your perspective, uh, Tina, as a physio. Um, what, would, what did you think was the benefits or what was different about Move Smart? Yeah, I guess in the classes themselves, the big difference I noticed from other classes I was taught, taught over the years was that we give a bit more time for kind of people to get to know each other through the discussion and education topic. Um, because that first half an hour is reserved just for that, um, rather than in other classes I've been in, it might be a quick hello, how are you doing, and then we go straight to exercises. Um, so, and then I just noticed as the course would progress, as the program progressed, people were definitely becoming more comfortable, maybe sharing some, you know, maybe lots of jokes and chit chat, but also maybe sharing their experiences and maybe asking for tips and tricks. Um, and I, I think at the end of the program, then people felt quite comfortable and had these, you know, really new ideas or people to come to for, um, for resources. So I thought that was just lovely to see how it kind of progressed over a couple of weeks. Um, and then in terms of our team, I think it was really great that we, because we all work with um, multiple sclerosis and people like Dulta and Galway and Stevie from Active Neuro and Inya, like we came together once a week to discuss those specific neuro and MS um, topics. Um, for example, and we were able to then put it immediately into practice, which is something I hadn't really experienced before. For example, I know we had that lecturer from Scotland who was doing a huge amount of research on foot drop. And so we got all our questions answered and we could just go to our classes then the next day and just kind of share that information and eventually led to us developing a foot drop resource. Um, so I just thought that was nice. It was almost a luxury to just have that time and just to really concentrate on one area so specifically. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm smiling because I'm remembering, I think on a couple of occasions, we got so carried away with the chat that we forgot to exercise. And I don't think you'd expect that in a physio class. But I think um, for me, one of the main things is I think people... Um, people learn as much from each other as they do from us. And I think possibly we learn more, you know, we have the, we have the theory, but you have the practical application of it. And I think, you know, there's things that people have tried that they found really good that, that, that other people found really well. Um, and I'm just looking into the, into the chat there. And I think there's a piece about making friends, isn't it? And I have to say that that was one of the things I think we worried about initially when we moved online, that we wouldn't have the chat and we wouldn't have the banter, but actually, um, yeah, it's 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 as good on Zoom, if not better. I think um, I I had a class that have just started on Tuesday. Um, that just started on Tuesday, and and uh, we we had to, I had to interrupt them and say, listen, it's only the second week. We can't be running out of time to exercise already. Um, just somebody was asking for the foot drop resource. Um, so if you go to follow that link that I sent, the the the, the link in red, or put in Move Smart MS uh, MS Ireland. Um, at the very, very, very bottom of that page. Um, uh, I, I also sent a link if anybody wants it. So as Susan said, when we're finished here, you can go onto the Move Smart MS um, webpage. And I also, if anyone wants to click on it right now, you can get it up. Yeah, sorry, Susan, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I'm just I'm spotting the chats as they're coming in. Um, and Mary, I agree with you. And I think that's one of the things I hope you picked up in my slide about our vision. Our vision isn't isn't just for online. Our vision is that, you know, it is that we, we meet the needs of everybody with MS um, and acknowledging the, for, that for that, that for some people, it's about a physio coming to their house. For some people, it's about a physio, uh, them coming to the physio. Um, and I completely agree. I think one of our big challenges now is to find those people who haven't engaged us for the last two years and make sure that they have uh, a programme that that's, that meets their needs. Um, and I, yeah, I completely agree. I think that's, you know, we, it's been very successful. I think what's interesting is we've gained people so some people have taken part in moves we've had a lot of people in move smart who've never done anything with ms ireland before and i think they've been attracted by the fact that they're going to be in a very a class with somebody who's who's very similar to them they're not going to be with other people who are maybe have ms for longer and have more problems with their walking um and i think yeah 
I don't know, just spotting the thing about mo motivation. Yeah, I agree with you. I think motivation, it, it, motivation for me on a, on a wet, rainy day when I know that I need to get out for a walk, it's really, really hard. Um, and I think, you know, my, my advice is, is try and uh, remember what it felt like when you were active. You know, that's, that's um, I just see a question there from Catherine about the exercise videos. So yes. these were videos that um, we recorded and sent out to all previous participants. So if you were a previous participant with us, so if you were part of a Move Smart at all last year, should have sent you out a video. Um, if not, maybe get in touch with whoever your, your, your instructor was and we'll let you know how to access them. Yeah. And some of the earlier classes we didn't video, we just used the PDFs. It was later on in the program. So I don't think I had one for your program, Catherine, that you did with me. Um, but we'll see if we can find I find a different yeah, result. Right. Yeah, and the reason I can't just say, oh, it's right here, is because they are specific to the classes. So we did, you know, just want to give you the one that would be most suitable for you. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Anybody else? Any other questions? Uh, Jack, I have a question for you, and I think what I mean it's what what are you hearing from participants, or what what are you finding is is that people are telling telling you because you're you're probably the person who talks to people more often than Tina and I do, and and so well, yeah, well, I, I suppose. On the one hand, I am an administrator, so I'm not a physiotherapist like you guys. I'm not a specialist, and but one from the organisational point of view or the um, the administration point of view, when I was ringing people up throughout last year, um, people wanted to exercise at different times of the day, and I suppose you might automatically default to think, oh, everyone wants to you know exercise in the evening because everyone works, but it's not actually always the case. I got just as many people saying, oh, can I please exercise in the morning when I have. Uh, maximum energy and I got a lot of people saying you know can we please do it you know after lunch I'm just you know I'm too groggy in the morning whatever and there was a huge you know number of people that once I said oh we actually do have a, you know class in the evening or we, we do have an early morning class that that kind of helped seal the deal so to speak now obviously you know for last year there was a team of three of us so and you know and Tina took the lion's share of the classes and you took up this class Susan so there's only so many classes we can put on so we do our best to accommodate everyone but having those three distinct time slots i think made a big difference in yeah, getting yeah, people on board yeah yeah that choice great. really helps great great um what i'm gonna just say just in terms of the videos and things like that probably the best way forward is if you email the physio that was the lead for your program they'll be able to either tina or myself we'll be mm -hmm. able to link you in and um, because as tina said um i think one of the things that i was very wary of there's a lot of videos out out on the internet um, that are available and I think for me it's about the one that's right for you that's not going to put you at risk of falling that's not going to put you at risk of injuring yourself that's going to be the right exercises designed for for you so um just make sure that you're you, that if you are using an exercise video that it is tailored to your ability so um I don't see any more questions in the chat so I think at this point um unless I see any more um I would just like to formally thank Tina and thank Jack um, it has been a brilliant team to be part of. Um, it, it's been a, a really, really successful program. As I said, I'm delighted that we have the funding uh, to keep uh, delivering Move Smart this year. Uh, and we hope that we can uh, achieve our vision of, of having a directly employed physio in every region of the country to bring about this vision and to enable us to deliver a range of programs for people that want online, for people who need it in their home, for people who can uh, travel to a venue. Um, and hopefully we can realise that vision. So thank you very much, but particularly thank you to the participants. Thank you for logging on today. Thank you for the time that you took to do the extra questionnaires and all of those kind of things. Um, and we really appreciate it. And we look forward to telling you uh, more things about uh, physio programmes and our successes in the future. So thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Really, really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Bye.